In this activity, you're going to be investigating the connection between height and time to fall. What we're going to be doing is having a pocket lab inside a little plastic bucket. I encourage you to do this live if you can. And if you do it live, make sure you surround the pocket lab in some sort of material that will absorb the shock. A small washcloth, some styrofoam, a stuffed animal, anything that will absorb the shock. Make sure though that the pocket lab still sits in there so that it is perfectly flat. So make sure your washcloth has a flat surface and then maybe you have a washcloth below and something else above to keep the pocket lab protected. Okay, you could change the height of the pocket lab using the arrows. So in this trial, it's about 0.6 meters off the ground. In real life, you would activate the software and then you would let go of the bucket. So when we do this virtualization, it will do it in the same order. You just have to do a single click. Click on the bucket, activates the software, drops the bucket, hits the ground. Once you have your data collected, you can make it bigger. You can look at the first moment it hit zero, and that will be when you first let go of the bucket, and that's at 220 milliseconds. It seemed to hit the ground somewhere around 575 milliseconds. So if you subtract those two numbers, you'll get the time of fall. That's what you want. How much time did it take to fall? That's how much time was it pinned on the zero. Okay, when you're done with a trial, shrink up your graph, click on the bucket, It'll return the bucket to the height that you dropped it from, change it to a new height so you can do a new trial, and drop it again. For each height, you want to record the corresponding time. Make sure you do some really low heights, medium heights, and a few of the higher heights. When you are done all your trials, click on the Finish button, put in your name, Make a graph of time in seconds versus height in meters. So make sure you convert these milliseconds over the seconds. When you get your graph, put in your graph constant here. Again, time is on the Y, height is on the X. Then use the equation you got from your graph to predict the time of fall if you were to drop it from a height that was not one of the ones that we measured. Hopefully you'll have no problem conducting this experiment. When you are done, share your completion certificate with your teacher. And if you have any problems, try to get help so you can figure out what you did incorrectly.